Okay, now we go to this passage here, X 5 1. Uh, but a certain man named Ananias with, with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession, and he kept back part of the proceeds, his wife also being aware of it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the prize of the land for yourself? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your hearts? You have not lied to man, but to God. Then Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. So great fear came upon all those who heard these things. Now this is a passage of warning. Now when we preach about a passage of warning, can we have grace, God's nature and grace? I'm going to demonstrate that, okay? But first I want to explain this passage. In the early church, there are many people, any, there were many uh, Christians who sold the possession and gave the money to the apostles, to the church. And there was a certain man named Ananias with his wife Sapphira. They sold the possession and he kept back part of the proceeds and his wife being aware of it. So they kept back part of money and his wife also know about it. And then Peter said, um, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? So here the Bible passages tell us that when we tell lies, it's Satan that fills our heart. That Satan fills our heart to motivate people to tell lies. So we know that telling a single lie, it comes, telling a single lie comes from Satan. It comes from Satan working in our heart. So we want to say no to any single lie. And you keep back part of the price of the land for yourself. While it remained, was it not your own? Now, when you know this house is yours, it is yours. And after it was sold, was it not in your own control? Even when you sell it, the, the money is still in your control. Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You can say, here is 80% of what I have got from my house. You can, he can say that to Peter and say, this is part of the money. Instead of saying, this is all the money. And you have not lied to men, but to God. So. Telling lies is lying to God. Then Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. So he breathed his last time and he died. So great fear came upon all those who heard these things. So great fear came upon the people and they were all afraid. Okay, now I'm just going to look at this passage and talk about these few points because that way um, maybe it's easier for you to pay attention. Okay. First, I interpret it, and then negative examples. Now, there are people, perhaps they, you know, the church told them to tithe, teach them to tithe according to the Bible. The Bible teaches us to tithe. And then, uh, but they, they did not tithe, and they told lies and say that they tithed. So they, they were lying. They were uh, keeping back part of, of the tithe. Now, if they cannot tithe, they, would, they should say it honestly, I did not tithe, uh, instead of saying I tithe. So it's very serious sin. So there are negative examples of people who did not tithe and then they told lies, saying that they have lied, uh, they have uh, tithed. Or other people, they have you know, kept back some of the money. They bought something for the household or for the church and they kept part of the money back. Uh, and then God is not happy with that. That God is very angry with that. And uh, now God doesn't kill people instantly today. Now it doesn't mean he cannot do it now. He can do it now. He, if he wants to, he can do it today. You know, there are people who, who sin against God and they are punished by God instantly. Uh, 
there is Bruce Lee, uh, the Chinese movie star and Kung Fu man, and he was very good in Kung Fu, and he was, his, he was famous worldwide. And he made his last movie, The Game of Death. And he thought, you know, uh, death can be a game. And then what happened was, uh, in the middle of the production of the film, he died. Uh, he died in the home of an actress, not in his own home, but in the home of an actress. And they were lying involving his death. Uh, that because the actress at first told lies that he did not die there. Someone else said that he died somewhere else. But then the, the, the camera, uh, the circuit camera in the building shows that Bruce Lee was brought out from the house. And Bruce Lee walked into that place, but then he was taken out uh, with an ambulance. So some people found that out. And then they have to tell the truth. So he, um, now there are other things. You know, one time I know a Chinese man who knows, who knew Bruce Lee. And uh, uh, this man said that he practiced Kung Fu with Bruce Lee. And years later, they met. And then Bruce Lee, you know, they practiced Kung Fu and Bruce Lee kicked him and he flew away over 10 feet away. And then he said to Bruce Lee, wow, you're so great now. And then he, um, he talked to Bruce Lee. This man is a Christian. He said, you know, Jesus is good. There is God. Do you want to believe in Jesus? And then Bruce Lee said, you look at me. I have everything. I don't need Jesus. And then he refused to believe in Jesus. He refused to believe in Jesus, but you know, when he died, he can do nothing about it. So, so when people think that they have everything, they could die, they could lose everything. So that's negative examples. Okay? Now God's nature and grace, God is God always tells the truth. In God there is always truth and light. There is no darkness. And when God, His words is always come true. His prophecies always come true. His promises always come true. So God never tell a lie. And, and His words are full of grace, full of blessings. And God's grace, now God's nature is His inner quality. God's grace is what He does to bless us. So God's uh, grace is that He will move in the heart of people. When people are converted, the Holy Spirit will come to the person and the Holy Spirit will move in the heart of people so that He will tell the truth. The Holy Spirit will tell people to tell the truth. Now, if you are born again, you will experience this. But some people say, if I tell lies, nobody knows. But I tell you, God knows. God will see your lies and you have to face the consequence of our lies. So don't test God. Don't test God. We, we need to understand that when we tell lies, we have to face the consequences very, very serious. So God's grace is that He will change people's life. He will send the Holy Spirit to work in our hearts so that we will tell the truth with love. And then when people tell the truth with love, God will bless them. God will reward them. And God will be happy with them. And He will raise them up to a high level. And then, why do people still tell lies? Because some people think it will be a long time before the final judgment. It, I have a, you know, I can just repent and then God will forgive me. Some people think repenting will take care of the sin. Now, truly repenting in a, with a sincere heart will bring the forgive, forgiveness of God. But still the sin, the consequence of the sin will still remain. Now, I use an example. If someone lies to his family member or to a church member or to his company, and then he, he's sorry to, f about his sin and they ask God to forgive him, and then he says sorry to the people. Now, God will forgive him if he's sincere. And the people, will they forgive him? Now, some people might forgive him 80%, 90%, that is a very good person. But most people say, 
I don't know whether I can trust you anymore. They, they cannot accept this. They cannot forgive the person anymore. They know that this person will continue to tell lies. So, so there will be consequences. He will lose the trust of people in his family or company or in the church. And sometimes it could be a very serious thing. You know, it can be so serious that he loses his job, he loses all his money, he has to go to courts to face the penalty of the law. So that could be very serious consequence. Even though when he asks forgive, for forgiveness, God will forgive him. He, can, he still needs to face the consequences of his sins and his life. So we must realize that there are warnings that when we sin, there will be serious consequences. Um, now sometimes he will say, well, when I lied last time, I did not have any serious consequences. Now, sometimes we don't see it, but eventually the lies will catch up with you. And people will know that you lied and then, uh, and then you lose your reputation and then you can get into a lot of trouble. Okay, how? How do we stop lying? First, our life needs to be filled with the love of God, filled with the truth of God, that we know that when I follow God, God will bless me. When I love God, God will bless me. So that is what I believe all the time. When I obey God, God will bless me. When I trust God, when I follow Him, when I serve God, God will be happy with me. So I continue to do that and God blesses my ministry so I can, uh, I can help people in Hong Kong and I can help people in Africa and in different countries. I've been a missionary to 15 countries. I thank God for the opportunity that I bless many, many people. And God has provided for me so I can go to these countries. It's a blessing from God. Thank God for His blessings. So, uh, so God will speak to our heart to motivate us to tell the truth and to obey Him. And when, then, when we do that, then God will bless our whole life. And I have experienced that all my lifetime. I thank God that God has provided for me, for my education, for opportunities to learn different things, opportunity to learn the move of the Holy Spirit, to experience the Holy Spirit, to continue to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to continue to have the joy of the Lord. I'm very happy with that. And to pray for people and they can experience change and I thank God for all these blessings. And I'm writing books. I want to help people and God provides for me. So, so God moves in our heart so that we want to obey God. And when we obey God, there are always good consequences. There are always blessings that follow us. So the main thing is that we are filled with the good things of God, filled with the, the thoughts of God, to believe that following God is the best thing. When I obey God is the best thing. When I serve God is the best thing. Therefore, I want to serve Him. I want to love Him. I want to obey Him. I never want to tell lies. So fill with the good things of God. And then whenever we have a thought of telling lies, if we have broken something and we want to admit that it's me who broke it. For instance, someone breaks the computer of the church or the sound system of the church. He might say, I don't say anything, nobody knows that I did it. But God knows. So we need to tell the truth and say, yes, I'm sorry, I did it. Please forgive me. Please forgive me that I did it. So that's very important that we, uh, that we respond to the Holy Spirit. When we respond to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will speak to us more and will bless us and will strengthen us and will use our life. Uh, and then we challenge people. Now today, God doesn't punish people like He punished Ananias and Sapphira, but it doesn't mean that we can take God, take God lightly. We cannot tell lies and think that it's okay. It's not okay. Telling lies is not okay. Sinning is not okay. So we say, Lord, please forgive me and give me the motivation to live with, uh, that we live in a way that we tell the truth all the time. And we tell the truth with love. We want to bless the people. Whoever we see, we want to bless them. We want to strengthen them. We want to glorify God, that God is happy with my life. So I hope that you can write messages like this, not only following these points, but also in a way to motivate people. Use the four points I just said. God loves me. I'm very precious. 
And if I trust God and obey God and serve Him, He is very happy and will bless me. If I don't trust God, don't obey Him, don't serve Him, then there will be destruction. So then we want to follow God totally. And then when I do th all these things according to God's instruction and love Him and enjoy Him, God wants us to enjoy Him, to believe that He will bless us. So we rejoice. We rejoice to serve God. No matter what the result is, we rejoice to serve God. We are happy to serve God. Then we re rejoice in God all the time. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I have the opportunity to serve God. It's so wonderful. So we want to motivate people and so that people are filled with joy when they serve God. So they are filled with joy. They are happy to serve God. So I hope that it will happen to all of you, that you are happy to serve God happy to obey Him, and you motivate people, we motivate people so that they, they happily follow God and obey God. Okay, so we want to preach in a way that people will see how wonderful it is to follow God. So these few points, how do we make people happy and motivated? Interpretation of passage to let people see how wonderful the passage is, the examples to let people know how when people don't follow God, what are the bad consequences? And when people follow God, what are the good consequences? And then God's nature and grace, that God is so beautiful and He is full of good nature. And if we follow His good nature, He'll bless us. And then His grace, he's, he's, He blesses us. He changed our life. He sent the Holy Spirit to change our life. And when we obey Him, He will for sure reward and bless us to motivate us. And why? Why do people still live in sin? And then reminder and warning, if we don't obey God, there will be serious consequences. And how? The first thing is to live in the presence of God, live in the, uh, the peace of God, with the goodness of God, that we are filled with the goodness of God. Then we, then we have the motivation to follow God. We want to praise God all the time. Then we want then we, when we are filled with the love of God all the time, then we want to obey Him all the time. And also when the Holy Spirit moves in our heart, then we we'll say, Lord, I want to respond to You. I want to love You. I want to obey You. I want to follow You. I want to say no to the sinful thoughts. Whenever I have a thought to sin, I will say no to that because it will bring destruction to me. Okay, God bless you. And we'll... Now, Next week, you know, I hope you do your assignment. I will go to a new topic now because I have uh, spoken enough about this, the sermon outlines already. I will go to a new topic and I hope you continue to learn. Okay, okay let's close to the prayer. Please, please stand up and relax in God. Oh Lord, thank you. Oh Heavenly Father, we thank you. You are loving God. You are kind God. You are good God. You're so beautiful. You're so wonderful. Lord, be with us. Help us. Bless us. Strengthen us so that we are filled with, with your good nature. We, you are filled with your good things so that we are motivated to serve you and love you and obey you. Father, be with us. Father, be with us. Change our life. Change our life uh, so that we are filled with the motivation to love you and obey you. So that we are filled with the motivation to take care of our sins. Oh, come Lord Holy Spirit, give us joy and peace to know that it's easy, it's not hard to obey you. When we try to obey you, when we put our effort to obey you, you are very happy with us. When we come to you, pray to you, you are very happy with us and you bless us with your presence and bless us with fruits. When we obey you, you are very happy and you bless our life. Thank you, Father you are God who blesses us willingly. So it's not hard to please you. Please help us to enjoy you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We enjoy you. Thank you, Father. We enjoy you. We love you. We adore you. We like you. Give us strength, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Give us the Holy Spirit. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. Fill us with your joy. Fill us with your strength. Father, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We love you. Please fill us with the Holy Spirit. Everyone here present. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. Give us joy and strength. Be with us. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, God bless you. God help you. Strengthen you and use your life mightily that you can write sermon uh, following this outline. 
and I hope that you you know all can do that and pass exams okay God bless you okay bye bye